Out of all your products, what would you say you sell the most of? Do some more questions as we go. Oh, that's good. So I'm gonna blend those two. Yeah, I can see that for sure. And the red pins are where we've, sh we've shipped to. Hey everyone, uh, I'm here with Steve from Making Good Sense. We are in Bartstown, Kentucky. Yep. Um, I'm on my way back from the National uh, Candle Association Conference in Charleston, and we had planned this uh, trip on my way back. Awesome place. That bourbon right. Capital of the world. Yeah, bourbon capital of the world. Anyways, yeah. um, that's not what we're doing today. We're actually in, uh, in his store. He's going to give us a little tour, show us around the different products, um, some of the areas where they uh, do some of the production, talk about his business. Um, and uh, yeah, just I guess a general Q and A. We'll talk. We'll talk products. Yeah. We'll talk business. And with that being said, I'll let Steve introduce himself. Steve, uh, owner Steve Stivers, owner of Making Good Sense, Barstown, Kentucky, as Wade said. Um, we are the bourbon capital of the world. We have Lux Row, Maker's Mark, Jim Beam, uh, and I think there's a total of eleven distilleries here in town. Um, we've been open for eight years. Started out as a small business doing craft fairs, and eventually worked into a full-fledged soap and candle shop about 1200 square foot and we're getting ready to expand into the space uh, next door which is an additional 1200 candles wax melts uh, smelly jellies which are car air fresheners bath bombs um, sugar scrubs handmade soap lotions lotion sticks we make everything here lip balms so these are all our bourbon related products two different bourbon scents uh, and three in the candles. We've got our bur old bourbon barrel and our sweet bourbon, which is like a, just a straight bourbon, like a vanilla bourbon. And then as we pan down here, you'll see everything's organized by scent. So we've got 30 um, different uh, scents on our main rack where it comes up with a scrub, um, a soap, and then the display to show you what it, the soap looks like. Um, these are our lotion sticks, which is kind of like a solid lotion, almost like a lip balm. And then we've got two different size lotions that we make. And we make everything in-house. We don't, um, I don't buy wholesale or anything like that. It's all made from scratch. When I first met Steve, um, we were, well, we met right. talking candle related. Yeah, in a, in a candle forum, yeah. basically like a Reddit for candle yeah. making. Yeah. And, uh, we started just sharing information because this is not the world that I lived in so much. I was mostly in candles and Steve has a lot of experience with soaps, bath and body products. And, and so where I met Wade was because we originally used a candle wax called Eco Soya. Right. I loved Eco Soya. It was, it, was, it was CB advanced. It was the best soy, all soy wax. Well, they uh, discontinued it. Uh, and then eventually came back out with it, but I don't even know if they, do they still make that um, now? I don't. It, it, they do. It was, it was awful when I tried it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah, it seem was, like it's the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. So, so. I never used it myself, but the, I the original with it from testing yours. Yeah, the original was yeah. the best. And it, it had perfect tops. You very, very rarely had Cinco's. Um, and it was just a really good wax. And you could use it for wax melts as well. It was really a really good wax. We didn't add any hardened wax to make them harder or anything like that. Which is a lesson if you, if you didn't already know, waxes can change over time. So especially if they change manufacturers yeah. or hands. Yes, yes, so uh, yeah. it's, it's not one wax forever necessarily. Well, and the thing is be prepared because we had bought like 20 or so cases of wax pre-Christmas and then I ran out in February. Well, when I went to buy it, they had discontinued it and I couldn't find any. So I literally was buying everything I could find. Like I've, heard, I've never found so many small candle companies or supply houses that you could buy and it was like exorbitant prices but i bought them just yeah. so that i could get some candles on the shelf yeah. so yeah always be prepared with um what you're doing that is one fortunate thing is these days there's a lot more candle suppliers oh yeah. so it's easier to find things as you need it we've got lip balms here roll them label them and shrink wrap them in house you do that all here from the same location yes yeah everything's done here yeah, and like I said, when I first met Steve, he had sent me kind of a little sample pack that had various things, soaps, lotions, chapsticks, candles, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's good stuff. It's really good yeah. stuff. We make mosquito spray, and we have really good reviews on our mosquito spray. And this is kind of like our men's line, which is gonna be growing as well. The pain in my butt is bath bombs. They, we sell so many of them, and they're, it's not so much that they're hard to make, they're just very product, like it takes a lot of products to use so when you get it, you spend a half an hour pulling everything out and then a half an hour putting it all back up. And uh, so it's, it's, yeah, it's just not, and then you gotta wear a mask and all that stuff. 
And then we've got body sprays and liquid soap, which I've got to get more liquid soap made up. One of the best things that we did a couple years ago was our car air fresheners. Um, if you make candles and that type of thing, it's a good add-on product just because people love these things. Like I've got two that are out of stock, but we sell a lot of these. We probably, I, I would hate to venture a number, but we, we make and sell a lot of those. And they're easy to make as well. Now ours are typically like a lot of the car freshies or the car air fresheners that you find. We uh, went with the circle uh, with our logo on it and it's been very popular. I uh, don't do a lot of smelly jelly things, but it's the type that you would bake basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're sachet beads that basically then you bake them. Um, and then we're back to our candles. We do a very simple candle line. I don't do any colors. Me and Wade have talked about you know, the advantage to colors. You, you found out, you told me early on that they tend to sell better colors. And I was like, it's just a lot, one extra step that I don't want to add into my. Well, that's also possible because I sell both. Right. So if, if both are there, they might flock to one, but if you don't sell both, then, then right, you know what I mean? So right. people buy what yeah, options yeah. exist. Yeah, so exactly right. My motto is when some of the girls that would work here would be like, but we're out of this. And it was like, if they, if we're out of it, they will find something else because they always want to buy exactly. something. They, exactly. So I don't stress about like something like I'm out of one of my candle scents up here. It's okay. It is okay. There, yeah. As long as you got other options, yeah, it's, it's not worth the logistical yeah. nightmare sometimes. Yeah. And I know a big stark difference between ours too is um, I, I can spend that extra time on candles with color and mm -hmm. more options because it's the bulk of my business where right. you have yeah, you know those, several kind of several other things that you have to yeah. keep stocked as well. Yeah. So yeah. and actually that's a, maybe that's a great question to, to start with is out of all your products, what would you say you sell the most of? So the bath bombs, um, soap. I would probably say would be you know that we sell the most of. We sell a lot of candles. Um, smelly jellies we sell a lot of. Um, those would be the top three that I would think we, you know, okay. sell a lot of. Yeah. Well, let's do a little bit more of a tour, wave that direction if you'd like. Do some more questions as we go. So here's the checkout area, and this is where we do some of our work. I made these a little earlier. So it's a fresh batch of soap. Fresh batch of soap that's unscented, so I was out of my unscented, so not anything really exciting. And then these are loofah soaps, so we make. Uh, it's basically soap in a column, but it's got a loofah mold that goes down oh, sure. um, like that. And then we, it'll set up overnight and then we'll cut it uh, tomorrow with a knife into one inch bars. These are your soap labels, I assume? Yeah. I'm gonna switch that up. So my form of printing, I, I was gonna show you this as well. I love this. I don't, I don't typically do variations like that and I'm not gonna do them anymore because it's, it's just way too much. You can see that's just for soap. Could you imagine if I had variations right. for every product? Right. So we use- By variations, you mean per, a different sense? Yeah, yeah, like for different names on them. Yeah. So we use a, their laminate transfer. So if you ever look into it, and it's basically like if you like, you would have a printer for your checkout that does like where it burns yep, like on there. This has a ribbon. And it prints on there, so I just run these through there, and it prints my everything wow. you see on there. Like um, so, like this here, I'll show you the, the the stark difference. So, like that is that. So and this we, is one you ran this we through. We print all of this with our thermal trans transfer printer. That's an excellent. Idea. Yeah. That's and so idea. yeah, yeah, I do this. I have one for candles. And then we have a, a one for uh, our like scrubs and products that, you know, are like that. But so these are standard labels or are these a specific type of paper? Well, that if you ever see gloss, gloss thermal transfer, mm -hmm. it's a laminate that you can print on. Okay. Yeah. So like if it doesn't have that laminate on there and you print on there, it'll rub right off. Right. Basically with these printers here, they're like what you would see like at UPS that print out like, like a label printer, but instead it has It just has a ribbon and it rolls on there and it, it prints right out. It's really awesome. That um, is, that is uh, ingenious. Yeah. <laughs> when I had talked to the lady at the third, the place was the first one that had mentioned it. Um, and I started learning more about it. Um, and it's just been a lifesaver because if we had to do, because at first on our soap boxes, we went to soap boxes and uh, we used to wrap, wrap them with a cigar band. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to kind of clean things up and give a little bit nicer look. And so we went to those, 
And my first thought was like, oh, we're, I'm gonna have to keep all these variations. Um, this is kind of back into our storage area. We've got like a shipping um, slash gift set area. It's a junk catch, really. If, um, everybody has one. My entire warehouse yeah, is a junk yeah, catch yeah, at the yeah, moment, yeah, so. Yeah. So we, we usually clean it up in January and then usually mid year. Our massive amounts of, which I'm sure you probably have a ton more than this, but. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely, definitely a lot. I've, you're right, I've got a ton, I've got probably several walls full of oils and it's absurd yeah it's, it's absurd <laughs> um this is my my ode <laughs> yeah so uh if, if anyone doesn't know what this is behind me so i i use a um i just recently bought a new cougar melter and pumper and uh, steve's been using one for use for years you bought this used right, right. so you, so he got his for one fortieth the price yeah. that i paid which is absolutely <laughs> absurd they're they're around twenty thousand dollars new yeah $500. so steve got a really good deal here and it works great. And it works great. But the first thing that they did, I paid the, I think paid for like a $500 uh, instructional class for him to teach me the numbers and all that stuff. And, uh, and the guy, it was very, they were very helpful. He was like, let's see if your pump's pumping at the right speed that it should be. Yeah. Make uh, sure all the pumps and everything are still yes, functional. at right? the right speed. Yeah. So, um, cause you know, like when you adjust it, it's going to speed or slow down the pump yeah. or whatever, depending on what it is. But yeah. So you um, are using this for different products or just strictly candles? Just strictly candles. I had thought about it doing it with lotion sticks, but just the switching over. So you can use these pumpers for multiple products. You can use them to make wax melts, candles, soaps, body butters, body lotions, chapsticks. You can use them to use anything that's really got a base. Yeah. You can use them for, um, and you get different pumps and different controls. And check out my other video if you're interested yeah, in how those work. Really, good. really, really good. fantastic. But like Steve said, I, I typically only use mine for my main primary lines as well, because if you're doing a lot of production, having to constantly change out the base oh, would, yeah. would not be fun. Yeah, not um, fun. Most yeah. companies that are doing a ton of that, they they have several of these, so. Right. And then we've got my two melters, which are, you know, I usually use this for soap, but I also use it for candles as well. Just, I can switch back and forth. This one's typically just for lotions. Where'd uh, you uh, get yours from? Like um yeah it was we bought this one from the uh was it waxmelters.com i yeah, believe exactly. as like, yeah i saw that right there oh yeah yeah Is yeah we bought this years ago and oh yeah i love this this has been great this one i found used just from somebody that was selling it and uh and if you can our, get equipment like this used you'll save so oh, much yeah, money yeah, yeah. so much money yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and these are our smelly jelly beads so as we make the car air freshers we make them up and White wicks. This is my, the, I'll, this is, I've used this for, so when I make candles, I'm a firm believer in, how can I say this? If I heat this up and I, when I heat this up and there's a little bit of wax in there, I will pour that out. I, the amount of wax that is in that thing is not going to affect the next batch. Oh no, it will not. It I, will not. It will not. I've heard people talk about taking water if you think that there's even like a half of a teaspoon in there yeah. and then if you do a 10 percent, if you're doing a 10 percent load a 10 percent of that it's like is a gram it's right? yeah. nothing so it is don't nothing. stress and i've actually done tests of that theory because it was something i was thinking about for years too right. and could not tell any difference whatsoever in yeah. any of the products and then what really assured it for me was when i bought my cougar melter and did some training my concern was is enough of the fragrance and wax from the previous batch getting out of the uh, out of the tube because you flush the tube there's a little process to purge it basically yeah and i was thinking man this is going to take a lot of purging to make sure there's none left right. it's yeah. not going to transfer you yeah. just don't notice it no. it's so yeah. so minimal and, and the reason i say that because everybody has these we bought this originally for wax and making wax melts because i wanted to do my now we make lip balms or lotion sticks and different things like that but what I'm getting at is the amount of wax that these things hold, you can put, if you buy a large griddle, you can fill, the, I can do six candles, 64 ounces in every one of these things. You put it on there, you put your wax in here, measure it out, they're ready to go. These will hold way more than that Presto will and you're ready to pour. Them. Yep, and the griddle keeps the it griddle, warm, preheated yes, sort of, it perfect. keeps the wax, it it's, so, yeah, it's a good idea. Um, Oh. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, Making good this, sense. This has only been here about a year and I'm not fond of where it's. Yeah, just because. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's going to get moved when we expand. But um, this is kind of like my staging. Like it keeps me from where I need to go. Um, bathroom. This is where we extra stock. We've got all of our soaps. 
Um, these are dried, boxed, except for these two here. Um, but this is where we pull from. So if you had to guess, well, you probably don't need to guess, you probably know. On, a, on an average month, how many boxes of soap would you go through? Any idea? I know it really varies. I know yearly, last year, I think we went through, I bought 15,000 boxes and we went through, we boxed every one of them up for there you in go. 2020. So yeah. at least a thousand boxes over yeah. Yeah. 1,200 a month. Yeah. This is again, kind of our overflow. This is something I never had never done before. So like when we started with the soaps and then our, our wax melts, this lets me know, hey, you're out of these. You need to make these. Oh crap, oh yeah. wah. So I come up back here, I, I stock up front from back here, and then I make a list of what I need to go get and pull it from over It's a there. good idea. I do yeah. something similar to that. It's yeah. uh, if I get to this point, that's my trigger threshold visually, something's getting low. Yeah, something's so, getting low. cause sometimes you're getting so busy, your, your systems yeah. that you might have might tell you, but you know, you're a little more organized than I am as far as, sometimes. you know, computer wise and stuff like that. Uh, and then this is our laser we do, um, our, for our smelly jellies, we make the um, wooden uh, pieces awesome. um, and they will engrave and it cuts and we can do acrylic and things like that. So, um, Yeah, and you said you, were, you made your sign out there. So I'll yeah. do another shot of that sign because yeah. that was really, really well done. It's Might funny. have to hire you to make some. Let me know, man. I'll do, you, you've helped me out so much over the years. It has no, you know. And we are a certified kitchen, so even though this is small, we are... Uh, because we make lip balms, we had to be certified as a uh, oh, kitchen. Okay. So inspections, inspections yeah, the cosmetic aspect of it. Yeah, here's the sign I was talking about. Yeah, we cut all that out. Made that on that machine you just saw. It is perfectly done. And this is our wall of uh, all the black pins are where people have come visit it oh, from. Oh, that's cool. And the red pins are where we've, sh we've shipped to. Okay, so yeah. when a customer comes in store, you just ask them? Yep, they let us, they typically look at it and they're like, oh, we're from blah, blah, blah. And that's a really yeah. neat idea. Yeah. Actually, I'm working on something that only a couple of people even know about. And this would be some inspiration. Let me put it that really, way. The, we had, I bought a school, like a high school map, and I was going to make it myself. And it sat in the closet for two years. And I ran up across this on Facebook. It's called Holy Cow Canvas. Okay. And they'll, they've got like, with all the Major League Baseball parks on it, they've got a whole variety of different. And they I'd like to get a golf me. one too, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. That's that's really neat. So I guess maybe a few business th questions in Q&A. So how long have you been in business now? Um, we've been here eight years and we ran like craft fairs and stuff like that for about a year and a half prior to that. So close, okay. close going on 10 total. I was gonna say, cause I, I think I met you somewhere around seven years ago, maybe originally, something yeah. in that range. Yeah. And uh, you've always been in this location. Mm -hmm. This space, how, how many square footage is this? 1,200 for the front and back. If, if you wouldn't mind sharing, what does something like that in, a, in an area like this cost? Well, when we were renting it, it was, what did we, I don't even know what we paid. I don't know. We bought this little section of the building. We own the uh, Airbnb upstairs that were the, the living space that we converted into Airbnb uh, and our mortgage is 1,100 a month. Wow, yeah, that's a good deal. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I just got yeah. gut punched actually, because oh, <laughs> I it what what I'm doing right now is, is hurts. It's uh, sickening. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll get some other footage and, and put it into the video here to show you more about what the street looks like, the area, um, the front of the space. It's just a really really cool historic area. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a really nice town. I'd never been through here. What other major expenses would you say you have on a month to run a business like this? You know, utilities, that's always a thing. I don't, I try to work ahead and like, like the, buy like the boxes and stuff like that so that I'm not, you know, doing that on a monthly basis. Yeah, I'm mostly your cost of goods. Yeah. Good. Do you do anything in the way of advertising? We've got, uh, we run on our um, radio station. I'm like the 12 o'clock uh, all request hour. Cool. And they literally talk all hour, like in between every commercial. Wow. Um, so that's very well money, very well spent. Um, we do, I have a uh, couple social media girls that kind of do our, uh, do some posts on Facebook and Instagram just cause I am so busy. Um, I do my own TikTok. I've ran some commercials in Louisville. I think I spent total of about 13,000 last year in advertising. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. The majority of that was for the commercials and stuff that I ran in Louisville and oh, I don't I know how well, yeah. you know, cause I'm competing against, uh, the buff cities that have, that have yeah. popped up and they've got three in Louisville. So it's, you know, I just was trying to get my name out there to the yeah. Louisville cause they're, they're about half an hour 
45 minutes away so yeah you know, well sometimes the advertising it's it's hard to tell sometimes it's just about testing and it's brand awareness and then it's hard to know what residual effect right. you get from that sometimes yeah. so yeah, uh is do you do you guys have goals on a monthly or weekly the kind of foot traffic you're expecting or hoping to get or is there i feel i look at my in in year and i see where i you know from year yeah. to year i don't know if you experienced the same thing last year was a down year uh, it wasn't for me. I got okay. fortunate, but I think it was I did put a few new lines in the water last year, and that helped kind of helped balance it out. out. Yeah, like so, 2022 for us was our best year ever, or 2021. Well, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. that was pretty common for a lot of people. Yeah, 2020 really, to 2021 yes, were really it was good. Our best year, and we were down about 25,000 last year. Not horrible, but it was about 25,000. And if you don't mind sharing, your, what is your, I guess, typical year look like as far as revenue, say gross uh, sales? Gross sales probably were, we were at like 260. Okay. So well, that's, that's pretty good, especially with the minimal expenses. I mean, yeah, your, right. your margins yeah. have got to be yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty good. And then that doesn't include like the Airbnb, that's very profitable. So that... Okay, know, that so that's like, separate, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's completely separate, so. Yeah, yeah Steve, they, they, they run a Airbnb as well um, that uh, they transitioned after purchasing this place, right? So that is a separate, obviously not ca candle, candle business, no, but it's a separate part of his business that they've expanded on. Actually, they're fortunate enough to let, or I was fortunate enough for them to let me stay there uh, on this trip for this evening. So I uh, appreciate that, that was, that was really nice and really cool experience. It's a, it's a great looking place. I love the branding, I like the whole feel. It's kind of, it's a little bit of my kind of vibe. I like the barn kind of rustic look. Is it just mostly you at this point? I know at one point when we first met, I know you had, uh, some people involved is, is it the same people or has it changed? It's changed. So it was me and my sister-in-law and right. then my husband and her husband were kind of the four owners. So in 2019, we, um, my husband and I bought the business out like from her, like it was, she was 50% and we were 50%. So we bought her out at the time when we did. So for the last, ever since we've opened this, we both worked full-time jobs. So right. She worked a full-time job at the hospital. I worked a full-time job at the hospital as a nurse. Yep. Uh, and so when we weren't at the hospital, we were here. Um, and she was just ready to get That's out. It's a lot. It That's is. Lot. So is this something when you were, you've always wanted to do? Or did this, kind of, did this craft kind of fall into your lap eventually? The soap aspect, like I had someone give me soap and I just, lo I just love the handmade soap. And so I just did it as a hobby for probably 10, 12 years. And then it just kind of fell you know we just started making it and selling it to local friends and it just kind of grew that's pretty much how it, it usually starts mine yeah. mine started the same way i had no intentions of turning it into what it is now right. and it just kind of developed and i i just dove in mm -hmm. deep um you know it'd be really fun maybe some other time i'll plan a trip mm -hmm. back out here and maybe we'll do like a batch of soap or something and yeah, let people that see that i you know we yeah, talk yeah. so much about candle making on the channel yeah. but a lot of candle makers make other similar yeah, products yeah. and 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 i have myself and i just I never talk about those on the channel. So maybe we'll start doing more of that yeah, if, if anyone's interested. So out of all the products you make, what would you say? I know the bath bombs are the bane of your existence, you said, yes. keeping up with them, what's but what's your favorite to make? Um, I like soap when I'm not under, like when I don't have I'm to crazy. crank it out. So typically like last week, that whole cart was filled with one scent. When you're making 20 cases of a candle, it's kind of like, okay, but I like sitting down and coming up with new scents and things like that. And the one thing I've learned from you, and I'm nowhere near on that, like on candles, you're very scientific and I'm nowhere near on that. Like you're, you will test the hell out of, yeah, of everything. Like Wade uses probably how many different brands of wicks? Uh, I use one primarily, but I store all the time consistently at least seven to ten if i can't make it work with a zinc wick yeah. <laughs> we're not making it because <laughs> i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna no do it. and i honestly i i always say on the channel do as i say not as i do because i do preach simplicity right. especially for people getting started you don't it can get very overwhelming quickly i can get overwhelming for someone experienced yes. so kiss keep it simple stupid yeah keep things process yeah. streamlined. It makes it easier to scale too. Yeah. So yeah, I don't necessarily recommend having as many types of products. Now, granted, part of the reason I have done that was I started taking the direction of educational content. Right. So a lot of it's to it's test so, and yeah, learn so, things so, yes. so I can help other people. But to your point, yes. yeah, I very 100% yeah. agree with Somebody that. Somebody on one of the groups, I don't know if it was Craft Server or wherever it was, but it might even been your group, your Facebook group, they had said, each fragrance that I buy, it gets one shot. If I make, if I make it, and it works, 
Like yeah. if it's if you can smell it and it works, then I run with it. I might adjust my wick, yeah. but if I can't smell it and it's burning great, throw it on. I ground. say similar things. So I have a video called uh, "So You Want Stronger Hot Throw," and the whole purpose of it is is everyone wants to give you all these tips and tricks and little things to try. When in reality, is you're forcing a square peg in a round hole sometimes, and if you're not getting the results you want, there's hundreds of thousands of fragrance oils. Yeah. Do not get married to one. Yeah. You can find, in fact, a lot of people says, well, I love this specific one. I can find stuff close, but I like this specific one. You can have duplications made of specific ones that burn better or give you a better throw. So I always advise, if you're not getting what you want, move on. Move on. Yeah, move it's on. Just, it's not it's worth not the hassle. Worth You'll it. end up hating it. it. Yeah. You'll end up hating yeah, it. You will. These are uh, some scents that I'm working on for the Kentucky Horse Park Museum. Okay. Um, they want, let me sm let you smell this one. It's a little bit easier. They're, they're close to Yeah, me. I just started buying this. Oh yeah. They want like horse related things. Oh, yeah. So like they want to blend like that with molasses yeah. and we're working on some scents for that. Oh, that's good. So I'm going to blend those two. Yeah, I can see that for sure. So when you do your sampling of blending oils, do you just start at a 50 50 and put them together or do you kind of use q-tips in a I bag or something q-tips and, and i use like an actual jar. mason jar and then i do it that way yeah. like I, I start with q-tips and do a ratio yeah. basically if you want a 50 50 blend you use yeah. one of each q-tip each q-tip is a, is a part exactly yeah. so do it in parts and then if you find something you like then i'll make test candles with it make sure it's and i usually tell them you know like and they'll come in and they'll be like well i need these candles like in the next month and i was like it's not gonna happen i'm yeah. it's never There's gonna happen plenty of lead time. yeah and so we'll like this process, I think I've got to make five different candles. And I, I told the customer, I was like, I'm going to try these, but it, even if I get a scent that you like, and it's the same way in soap. Um, we did a soap for Heaven Hill. Uh, it smelled great. Um, we I actually, I did probably 30 different jars and let them pick out the top four or five. It was, it was mind boggling. And then we made them, they smelled totally different. And so then they, they picked from changed that, that, changed it from that. So. I don't really have any other specific questions. Is there anything else that uh, you want to just share or that you would talk about? Or? If you're thinking of going into a business like this, don't let all this craziness scare you. No, this is, this is after yeah. a decade plus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we didn't start. Scary. Yeah, we didn't start this way. But yeah, it's don't let anybody and don't let your friends and family, don't let them poo-poo your ideals because Which some will. They will, they will, they really will. And they'll, they'll even come as close to saying you're crazy for doing it, you know. Uh, and that's okay. I'm here doing something that I love and, and that's the most important thing. Any, any uh, other tips for maybe brand new? Um, you know, we, you talked a little bit about your inspiration and, and things, but uh, tips for brand new makers. Not sure really, I guess, how to get started, what to do. Um, um, just in general. I hate to say don't cheap out when you do things, but maybe focus on, you know, instead of, like with candles or anything, don't try to come in and think you're going to buy 30 different scents. You're better off maybe picking five and, and, and starting small so that you don't, so that you can buy quality fragrances. Like when we first started out, I remember my sister-in-law, she would get on eBay and at the time Craigslist and try to find people that had fragrance oils. And so then, you know, you're, you're making these, you know what I'm saying? I see a lot of times on the camp, on the forum group, talk, somebody talking about like, Oh, I found this wax. You don't know what on, it is. You don't know what it is. You don't, you're, you need reproducible yes. products. And it's not because it's like, you're saying that that's a bad, it's like, One's better than the other. One's better than the other. It has nothing to do with that. It's just, you need things where if I buy this, this month, next month i gotta buy it from the same place like we said earlier yeah. just keep it simple, keep it simple. reach out to resources yeah. i was the I, I guarantee you i because i had been a soap maker for years but i was the wine i don't want to say whiner but i was the complaint you know like we we all we see them on the forums like i can't get these oh. candles to burn i can't get them to burn yeah. they're not burning right and i was that person because i had this wonderful eco soil wax yeah <laughs> and it went bye bye and then i was like because i tried 464 i hated it i tried i don't know probably 10 or and you were the one that suggested the 6006 yeah, that's what i was using a ton yes. of at that time too so. um and that's we love that wax yeah. now I, I love the pro 600 i love it it's a logistical thing to consider to change your entire wax blend. Oh, yeah. Your test, oh, yeah. it's retesting, you're starting from scratch. Yes. If you're finding something that works for you, don't get distracted by yes. shiny object syndrome. Yes. If you got something that's working, 
it, with it. Yeah, you don't need to. You don't need to worry yeah. about changing. Steve has been using the same wax now for seven, seven years, years, probably yeah. since mm -hmm. since we met, and he's had great success with it. Yeah. No issues at all. Do yeah. you have any other questions or comments for uh, for myself or for Steve? You can put them in the comment of this YouTube channel or, or on the Facebook group that's linked in the description below. We're both in there. We can chime in and help, and uh, we're we're both like working with other candle makers, soap makers, and others in the industry. Just want to tell you, thank you. Uh, appreciate you letting me come by, and yeah. this was a lot of fun, and I've been wanting to see your place for years, yeah. so, so this was awesome for me, yeah. so appreciate it. He's getting busier because his replies got less. Sure. He's busier, and then one day I'm on a forum, and I literally say, hey, it's kind of like Wade said in his video, and I'm like, Wade said in his video? I didn't even know you had a YouTube channel. Oh, I swear to God. It was like, son of a... Now, I go to your YouTube channel. It's like you had at the time, I don't know, like thousands of subscribers. I don't remember what it was. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Started this big conglomerate. Well, I, and actually since starting the channel, I've had several people... It, this was more at the first probably year of the channel um, that said... Man, I used to follow you all the time on Craft Server, well, I and I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, oh yeah, Craft Server, because that's where you could, and even then I knew you did a lot of testing, and that's when, you know, I, anyway.